Coming up, the former president has pleaded not guilty to all 37 federal charges against him. What Trump had to say following his court appearance. And car thefts have dramatically spiked in the U.S. and many thieves are slipping through the U.S. border unchecked. The rundown starts now. This is Straight Arrow News bringing you unbiased straight facts. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kara Rucker. As expected, former President Trump pleaded not guilty to all 37 charges he's facing related to his handling of classified documents. Similar to his arraignment over hush money payments to Stormy Daniels earlier this year, Trump used the historic moment to further declare his innocence and rail on the prosecution. After the arraignment, it was back to his Bedminster, New Jersey resort for a planned speech. Whatever documents the president decides to take with him, he has the right to do so. It's an absolute right. This is the law. And that is something that people have now seen, and it couldn't be more clear. They ought to drop this case immediately because they're destroying the country. Other highlights of the speech included Trump claiming he was too busy to go through the boxes of documents at his Mar-a-Lago resort and promising to appoint a special prosecutor to investigate President Biden and his family if Trump is elected president next year. Top federal officials will be meeting today, but for the first time in 15 months, the Federal Reserve is poised to leave interest rates alone. The streak of rate hikes has raised interest rates at the fastest pace in four decades. While we are expecting the rates to be left alone this month, the Fed Chair Jerome Powell has made it clear that any such pause may be more like a skip with another rate hike likely as soon as their next meeting in late July. There are 18 committee members on a policymaking committee that ultimately decides the rate hikes. There appears to be a split in policymakers, those who want the rates to increase one or two more times, and those who want to leave the rate alone and monitor inflation. The latter group is concerned that hiking too aggressively would heighten the risk of recession. The University of Wisconsin is the latest college at the center of a fight for state funding over its diversity initiatives. Republicans in the state are looking to slash more than $30 million of taxpayer money the university receives in order to defund its diversity, equity, and inclusion programs on campus. The GOP-controlled legislature was poised to make the cuts on Tuesday, but postponed the vote after its finance committee couldn't come to an agreement after seven hours of closed-door discussions. The state has already refused to pay for the university's top building project in retaliation of what they call frivolous spending on diversity programs. A new chief diversity officer at the university started work this week with a $225,000 salary. State Republicans still plan on taking a vote to defund the University of Wisconsin, but are tabling it for now until they reach an agreement on how far to cut the school's budget. Russia is set to deliver tactical nuclear weapons to military storage facilities in Belarus, largely used as Russia's launching pad in the Ukraine war. The Belarus president confirming the arrival of weapons and calling Russia's nuclear arsenal three times more powerful than the atomic bombs the U.S. dropped on Hiroshima. The Belarus president said there would not be any hesitation to use the nuclear weapons in response to potential aggressors. Russia will retain control over the nukes, continuing to use Belarus as a launching pad for Moscow's military operations. Putin justified the transfer by pointing to the U.S. deploying their own nukes around European countries. The U.S. has condemned Russia for transferring the arsenal, but also said there is no sign that Russia plans to use them. This marks the first time since the fall of the Soviet Union that Moscow has moved warheads outside of their country. More than one million cars were stolen in 2022, and that's the highest number since 2008. It's the equivalent of about two vehicles stolen every minute. The Kia and Hyundai car theft challenge is probably not helping those numbers. With camera surveillance at some border ports of entry, a CBS News investigation uncovered thousands of these stolen vehicles being smuggled into Mexico and going unchecked. License plate readers installed in California, Arizona, and Texas were able to capture nearly 3,000 stolen vehicles driven out of the country, according to a California Highway Patrol official, who suspects the number is much larger.
Not only are the vehicles being driven out, but luxury cars are also being smuggled in shipping containers at ports from the east to the west coast. And we'll all be paying for the increase in car thefts because increased crime rates are going to translate into paying a higher premium for your vehicle. That's according to the National Insurance Crime Bureau. A U.S. Army base in Louisiana has been renamed from Fort Polk to Fort Johnson in the latest erasure of a Confederate commander. The fort is now named after Sergeant William Henry Johnson, a black World War I hero and Medal of Honor recipient. Johnson served in the first ever all-black National Guard unit. The renaming of military bases is due to a mandate from the Pentagon to remove Confederate names from military installations. Fort Polk is the fourth of nine bases to receive name changes. Earlier this month, Fort Bragg was renamed to Fort Liberty, something presidential candidate Ron DeSantis on the campaign trail promised to reverse if he becomes president. Our Mahmoud Bennett has a detailed report on the renaming of military bases, and you can find that on our website, san.com. These are your top stories. Thanks for joining us for the rundown. We're on a mission to bring back trustworthy journalism by serving only you, not an agenda. Be sure to check out more of our work at straightarrownews.com. And you can also find the latest rundown episodes available as a podcast on all major podcast platforms. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, I'm Kara Rucker. Have a great day. Thank you.